Hi, I'm Catherine and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making gluten-free sourdough. I'm super excited about this one, but you'll need a gluten-free sourdough starter. Please refer to our video of how to make your own gluten-free sourdough starter at home. If you're wanting to use wheat flour, you can use the same exact process. Just use wheat flour in place of when I say gluten-free all-purpose flour. If you are making this with wheat flour, please refer to the descriptions where I give a few suggestions on how to make adjustments for wheat flour instead of gluten-free all-purpose flour, but it's doable using roughly the same process. We will be using a kitchen scale for this process. If you don't have one, you can use volume instead, like cups, but it does turn out better when you can have more precise measurements in grams. We're gonna start by measuring 390 grams of water. Then we'll add 120 grams of our sourdough starter and mix this in well. After it's mixed in, you'll add 500 grams of all-purpose gluten-free flour and stir that in really well. If you find that your dough is really moist and wet like mine, you can add more flour until it becomes more of a dough-like consistency. Here I'm adding 100 grams more of all-purpose flour. If you don't have your own gluten-free all-purpose flour, we're adding a video right here of how you can make that at home really cheap and easy. But if you want a recommendation for one you can buy in the store, I'd recommend Bob's Mill all-purpose flour. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so you can use it just like normal flour. I forgot to add salt to this, but I was supposed to add a tablespoon, so if you want to not skip the salt like me, you can do that. <laughs> Here I'm adding a teaspoon of thyme, and this is to give it a fun flavor, but also somewhat to mask the flavors that come from the starch and xanthan gum. If you find that you're having a hard time adjusting to gluten-free all-purpose flour taste because you're used to, well, regular wheat flour, I shouldn't say regular. Alternate diets are totally fine, people. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you're not used to the gluten-free all-purpose flour, instead of wheat flour, this can help adjust to those flavors because it gives a more familiar flavor in the dough. At this point, you'll cover your bowl and let it sit at room temperature to rise for half an hour. After the half hour, you're going to let it stretch. I totally Germaned that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your sourdough's just gonna rip off the blanket and start stretching itself. It'll be a miracle. Miracle. <laughs> I can't talk anymore either. Oh my god. <laughs> so after any spices are thoroughly mixed in, you're going to cover it and let it sit for half an hour. This is a great point to refeed your sourdough starter. Assuming you want to keep it, you need to keep it alive. So just make sure that you're feeding it 60 grams of water, 60 grams of your all-purpose flour yet again. After the 30 minutes are up, remove the cover and stretch the dough with your hands. If it's still too sticky at this point, you can add flour to make it more workable. And you're going to repeat this process four times. So it should be sitting to rise for a total of two hours. After those two hours are up, we've actually decided to let our sourdough sit overnight because it's getting pretty late here and I feel like it needs a little more time to rise personally. Again, that might be because our apartment is kind of cold, so it just lets the fermentation really build up when it has more time, not the spice kind of time. Anyway, <laughs> if you feel the same about yours, you can also let it sit overnight at room temperature, and that's perfectly fine. But we're going to be baking ours first thing in the morning tomorrow. When you're ready to bake, it should be at this point really capable of forming a ball. So here I've added more flour to mine, as you can see, so that I can work with it better with my hands. Then I'm just going to transfer it to a parchment lined baking dish that has a lid. Bake in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. This allows it to bake a little bit slower which I find helps it more evenly bake throughout. 
The first 20 minutes, you'll bake with the lid on and then remove the lid for the next 20 minutes or until it browns. After you see the edges turning a little brown and golden, you can remove it from the oven and let it cool down and then it's ready to enjoy. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to see you around.